can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. Of life. Lord, we thank you for this privilege and opportunity. As we gather together, we pray that your Word will come expressly to us. Grant us understanding of your Word, and then also give us the grace not just to be the hearer, but also the doers of the Word. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, I commit everything into your hand and ask you to help communicate the truth of God's word in the most simple way. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at discipleship part two. And uh, before I do that, I want to emphasize um, um, a little, uh, some truths concerning um, the work of the ministry, in which case uh, there is always a division of labor in everything that we do in the kingdom of God. God has apportioned and assigned everyone to a particular um, job description or job assignment or portfolio. So there should be no schism, there should be no quarrel, there should be no competition, and there should be nothing like feeling uh, inferior to this person or to that person, or you feel that... Um, you are doing more than this other person or you are doing less than this other person and that will create a kind of uh, disability in us and amongst us and then create the way for Satan to start to act. I just want to raise one uh, scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, and I read to 8. He said, I and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, and you not are you not carnal and walk as men? For while one said, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planted and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. You see, so there is a division of labor God has appointed to each and every one of us a particular role to play. So someone might be on the field, in the field there, preaching and getting people saved. There are people who are going to do the praying. There are people who are going to carry the equipment. There are people who are going to set them up, and there are people who are going to um uh, organize the whole meeting there are people who are going to do one thing or the other so every one of us have a part to play and the bible makes us to understand that there is no one person that is more uh, uh, superior than the other or inferior than the other no he said we are all equal the only thing is that that what God is looking out for is your faithfulness in that which he has committed to you to do, okay? So you find out that the person who is on the pulpit, they're praying and preaching and um, getting a lot of people saved and healed and all of that, will receive the same reward as somebody who is doing the ushering and catching the people. But that is just what the word of God, so that God made it in such a way that every, because the one that is on the pulpit, he gave him, he gave him or her enormous of grace to be able to do that. The one that is doing the offering, he gave that person enough grace to be able to do that. So by that, everyone is leveled, okay? So like we read now, he said, uh, Apollos is what he said, I planted, I Paul planted, and then Apollos watered. So there is those of them, there are those of them who are doing the planting of the seed of God's word, who are out there in the field, and there are those who are 
in the uh, receiving those um, harvests and then training them and discipling in them. So we are talking about the aspect of discipleship. Those of them who are doing the involved in discipleship, so that you don't think that those of them who are out there in the field are doing more. No, neither are you the one. Uh, neither are, are you doing better. You that are inside, they are doing the discipleship and doing all the follow-up and all of that. You are not better than the one that are out there in the way. So everyone is going to do his work based on what God has given to the person to do. Okay, so having said that, we now come to the practicality of it. <clears throat> So in this part two of discipleship, we're going to be looking at two, three major issues in that discipleship. Okay, part two. Remember yesterday we, deal, we dealt with um, uh, the theory, how to raise disciple and then how to make a disciple, the kind of uh, the stages of discipleship, what you need to do at every stage and all of that we have discussed that so today we're going to be looking at the part two of it which has to do with uh, prayer and then <clears throat> it has to do with prayer and uh, we're going to do uh, how to teach to observe and then the practicals so we start with prayer prayer is an integral part of soul winning and discipleship Okay, you cannot separate the two. And the prayer is made before the soul is saved. Prayer is made while the soul is saved. And prayer is made even after the soul is saved. So the prayer is intertwined in every area. So it is an integral part of everything. Remove prayer from all of this. Then there is nothing like evangelism. There is nothing like soul winning. There is nothing like discipleship because it's not going to work. Okay, so prayer steers away the influence of Satan and brings God's presence and resources upon the believer. That's what the prayer does. So because the enemy is there, there's a lot of uh, work the devil is doing. So prayer will clear him from the scene and then it brings the resources of heaven to bear upon the believer. So you cannot get the result. Okay, so in that particular aspect we're going to be looking at the prayer proper and the first aspect of that prayer is a prayer that is uh, built to establish the young convert you start the prayer you start your discipleship first with prayer and that prayer will have to do with the establishment of the disciple or of the Christian. Now we look at um, um, Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. And in Galatians 4, 19, he says, My little children, of whom I travel in bed again, until Christ be formed in you. You see, until, he say, My little children, in whom I travel in bed again. Again means that there was a travail. That is why I said, Prayer is intertwined. You cannot divulge prayer from evangelism, from soul winning. It's all mixed together. So you pray before the soul is one. You pray while the soul is one. And you pray, continue to pray after the soul is one. And that is the prayer after the soul is one that he's talking about here, which is in which he said, My little children of whom I travel in bed again until Christ be formed in you. So this aspect of prayer is a prayer that you make first of all that's the first prayer you are going to pray for somebody that has received jesus christ that somebody that you want to disciple you are going to start with the discipleship in prayer and this is the first aspect of prayer you are going to make it is a prayer that will establish that person in christ first that is what he meant by until christ be formed in you so there has to be a formation of jesus christ in the life of that person remember we are talking about the person remember the course we we mentioned in model one the first of it is an understanding the foundation of the christian faith that is to to tell you that Jesus Christ needs to be formed in the life of that person. He needs to know that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He needs to know in whom that he has believed. He needs to know the rock upon which he is standing and all of that. So it is through prayer that you make it happen. Because I have always said there are two pronged approach in everything that you are going to do spiritual wise. 
Okay? The first is that you deal with it in prayer. Then the second that you come down in the physical and then do the physical part. That is why you say faith without works is dead. So there has to be two pronged approach. Now that you have preached the word of God, you have sown that seed, the person is born again, and now he comes for discipleship. And he have taken him through all those processes. So while that is going on, you are going to pray that the person's heart be formed, that Jesus Christ will be formed in the life of that person. So what specifically, what kind of prayer are you going to be praying? Now that we know it is a prayer that will help the person to be formed, that Jesus Christ will be formed in that person's heart. What aspect of prayer specifically are you going to pray? We find it out in uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, where Paul prayed, he said that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may comprehend with all the brethren you see the kind of prayer this is the prayer that establishes a a, a believer in christ when you spend time praying this particular kind of prayer it won't be long you notice a change you notice a formation of jesus christ in the life of that person you notice stability in the life of that person when you begin to make this kind of prayer and another aspect of that prayer is, uh, you see it in um, <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 uh, to 19. He said, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you see that, and the love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. And what is he praying? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sin, and what is exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, and so on and so forth. So these are the prayers that you pray that will establish the, Christ, the, the believer, that person that you want to uh, uh, disciple. This is The first thing is that you want that person to be established. And so you do that primarily and firstly in prayer. And this is how you do that prayer. So when you win a soul and you have, you know, the moment that person has received Jesus Christ into his heart and then they are passed through the water baptism, the Holy Ghost baptism, and then communion and all of that. The next thing is now the person is ready for discipleship because that is a, the, quali the qualification for discipleship. So once that is done, the next thing is that you begin to pray this prayer for that brother, for that brother or that sister. And there are different kinds of, so many of other prayer like this in the Pauline prayer as you go through the scripture. We are going to do a, a, a little kind of book on it so that you know what it is that you need to do. And then there is another aspect of prayer you are going to be praying for that young believer. And that is, uh, why do you need to pray this kind of prayer? Because that particular individual is exposed, exposed to the attacks of the devil. There is going to be a lot of persecution. There is going to be a lot of um, distractions and all of that. devil is going to be doing everything to win that person back, to discourage that person from moving on and all of that. And so Paul was praying that prayer in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. He said, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you, this is the prayer he was praying, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, so that you have that inner man your inner man strengthened. You are yours. You have that stamina, the ability to withstand the pressure, the ability to withstand the 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 dust that the enemy is going to raise during that time. Because sometimes you get saved, then there's going to be a whole lot of the um, you know attack and persecution. I remember in those days. I just don't know about these days, you know. But in those days when we received Jesus Christ, there was a lot of persecution and all of that. I remember when I got born again, I came back to the, my, my family in the village and my, my, it was actually my brothers that were steering the, 
the problem and then my father called for a meeting and then i was summoned to appear in the meeting and i came and they said this your born again thing you must resign you must uh, drop it you must uh, forget about it if not you are going to leave this family you are not going to be part of this family again we are going to disown you and all of that you know in that kind of situation you weigh all the options a whole lot of things will be happening to you you become afraid you become intimidated so if if I live now, what about my father, my mother, my brother, my sisters, and my siblings, and all of that? So those family attachment and all of that will weigh you down, and then you will succumb to their threats and all of that. But God gave me that grace that time because I believe a whole lot of people were praying for me in those days and all that. So what I did was I said to them, I don't know where the confidence came from. I don't know where the boldness came from. I just said, well, as a matter of, because I fear my dad like anything I my the fear of my dad then was the beginning of wisdom anyway so I said I don't know where the boldness and the courage came I opened my mouth and I looked at them in the face and said I am so sorry I have gone too far to go back and all of that meanwhile I just got born again if you a few either weeks or months and all that that i was telling them that i had gone too far to go back again i don't understand what they are taking talking about instead of me going back or renouncing jesus christ i'm going to leave the family and they say get up and leave right now and i got up i walked into the house packed my few things i had and then i left for four years i didn't come back to my house i didn't hear from my father from my mother my brother nobody nothing and i was in school that those days i was in the university so school who fees, money, nothing, nobody, you know, but God kept me. And that is why, that is because somebody somewhere was praying and praying this kind of prayer. You pray that God will strengthen you. If you read that Isaiah chapter number 30, Isaiah 30, 40, Isaiah 30, 40, he says, uh, just one moment, okay. Isaiah 40, I think, uh, Isaiah 40, I beg your pardon. He said, to whom will, the, uh, will you liken unto me, or shall I be equal, said the Holy One? He said in verse... Um, in verse 28 of Isaiah chapter 40, say, He has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, and the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29 says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He said, they shall mount up, up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So this is the prayer that you need to pray so that he will have strength, so that when he run, he will not be weary, so that when he walk, he will not faint, so he will mount up with wings as eagles and all of that. All this energy and boldness and strength is supplied through prayer. So that is the kind of prayer you'll be praying for that young believer. There is another aspect of prayer, and he has to follow this sequence, okay? And there is, after you pray for the establishment and pray that God will give him the strength and all of that to go through the whole hog and all of that. The next one is start praying for prayer, a prayer of growth. When he gets to a certain stage, you begin to pray that prayer for growth and that prayer for growth so that he will grow spiritually. Okay, so that is found in Ephesians chapter 1, that verse 16 to 20. He says, I seek not to, thank, uh, uh, to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer, that the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you, give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, your eyes of understanding being enlightened, so that you will know the exceeding greatness of his power towards you that believe and all of that. So you begin to pray that prayer. is a prayer so that he will know 
the mind of God so that he will understand who God is and then know the grace that God has, the investment that God has put inside of him, the resources that God has made available to him so that he begin to take advantage of it and then know that God has given him power and that power that is inherent in him is the same power that God used when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead and that same power dwells in him and all of that. If you read that Ephesians chapter 1 verse 16 down to the end. You see what the Bible, uh, Paul was praying for the people, for the brethren in um, Ephesus. So you begin to pray that prayer is a prayer for their growth. There is also prayer for maturity, a kind of prayer you pray for. So there is different kinds of prayer. You, you, you don't have to be praying a prayer for babies, for, for the adult, and then you pray the prayer you're supposed to pray for the adult for the babies. Just like Paul said, when you ought to be teachers, you still have need to be fed with milk, okay? You are still a babe. So there is a kind of food, just like you don't give a baby, you don't give a baby solid food to swallow, and a wedu and a mala, a newly born baby. You don't do that. So, but you feed the baby with a particular kind of food. The same way there is a particular kind of prayer you pray at a certain time. You don't just model the whole thing up. That is why the Bible said that he that winneth soul is wise. He needs wisdom. He needs skill. He needs a lot of understanding. In your teaching of the word and all of that, there are certain, you know, uh, uh, precept upon precept and line upon line. You don't just model the whole thing together. And some, maybe a baby Christian, you begin to teach the person about the rod of Moses and all of that. He will not understand what you are saying. Okay? So, the same way there are prayers that you pray for at a certain stage of the believer's growth. So, when it comes to maturity, you begin to pray the prayer like in a Colossians, for example, uh, um, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. There are a whole lot of them in the Bible. He said, For this cause, uh, um, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to un uh, desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, bearing fruit unto every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all might on according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering, and with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the life. And Ephesians, uh, Philippians chapter 3, 10, he said that I may know him, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, so that the person will, because when you talk about suffering, the Bible tells us in Hebrew 5, 10, he said, though Jesus Christ was a son of God, he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. So if you want to live, you want uh, someone to live a life of obedience to the word of God, you, you go through that in prayer, first of all. And what kind of prayer are you going to be praying? It is this kind of prayer that he will be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience, and a long suffering with joyfulness. Oh, rather, sorry, uh, uh, I'll read in another scripture. Ephesians chapter 3, uh, Philippians chapter 3, he said that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his, a suffer unto the point of death. So it is not the prayer that you pray for babies, somebody that just gave his life to Jesus Christ. It's a prayer for maturity and all of that. Another kind of prayer like that is found in Hebrew chapter 13. In Hebrew 13, 20, he says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the pit of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect, you see, in every good work to do his will, walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. You see, that God will continue to walk in you, perfecting you, making you perfect. So it is not just for baby, it is a mature, uh, for the mature Christians, the ones you are, you are looking up to, for maturity. That's what you're going to do. So you see the kind of prayer you're going to pray. Like I said in the first, in the beginning, you start with um, uh, prayer, okay? And these are, there are different kinds of prayer you pray at the, every stage of uh, the discipleship. Then after that, next to that is the second thing you are going to be doing is uh, teach them to observe. 
and to do. We find this out in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. He says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He says in verse 20, teaching them to do what? To observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. Amen. So teach them to observe all things before they do it. So they have to first of all observe. If you look at the life of um, uh, what Peter did, you know, the disciples were observing every single thing that Jesus Christ was doing. So after the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, these guys were let loose. They went into ministry and all of that. And then there was a case about a dead case in the person of Dorcas in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 9, verse 39 and 40. Okay? I'm going to show you the similarity in Acts of our Apostle chapter 9. For example, in verse 39 and 40, you see what happened there. Acts of Apostles chapter 9, verse 39 and 40. The Bible says, And Peter arose and went with them, because in verse 38 he said, And for as much as leader was nigh to Joppa, the disciple had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter, verse 39, arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and garments with which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth. Notice, Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the uh, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes and she saw Peter and sat up and all of that. Now, if you read the account of uh, Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 8, verse 51, you notice the same thing. Because so what it means is that um, they were observing what Jesus Christ did. So when it was their own turn, they did exactly what Jesus did. So the Bible says concerning um, uh, the Jairus' daughter that died. In verse 50, says, But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And this, verse 51 says, And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in. You see the same thing. Save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. He didn't allow the same thing that Peter did. When he came to that doctor's room where she laid, and he asked every other person to leave, except those of them that were with him. The the same thing that Jesus Christ. So they were looking at the people casting out devil and healing the sick and all of that. And then he commissioned them and sent them to go and do likewise. And they went and they did it. And they came back with result. And they were excited. Although Jesus now hated them and said, Rejoice, not because um, uh, uh, Satan's are subject to you, but most importantly, rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. However, when Jesus Christ was sending them uh, on on a mission, uh, giving them the protocol, he gave them clear cut directions on what to do and how to go about to uh, uh, go about doing that. So you need to give them specific instruction and guidance. That's what you do in. Um, in uh, mentorship and all of that. So in the coaching, that is where you, you send them, they go to do the practical. In the mentorship, you guide them, you instruct them, you counsel them, you tell them, do it this way or do that, do it that way. That is all that was said in Luke chapter 10. If you read from verses 2 to 16, you see that is where Jesus Christ marshaled out the instruction on where to go and how to go about it and all of that. So you see, like I said, there are the, the three uh, aspect of uh, the discipleship you are going to be doing in this particular end. And that starts with prayer. And I said, 
in prayer there are three aspects or four aspects of prayer you are going to be making the first one is a prayer of establishment i'm just doing a recap before i take questions there is a prayer of establishment for the brother for the brother or the sister that you want to disciple and then there is a prayer for strength for god to give him the grace to be able to go through that is inner strength not by might or power but by the spirit of god that the holy ghost will supply him or her all the strength that is needed to get the job done okay to face the persecution that will come his way then the third one is um you pray for for the spiritual growth of that person and there is a particular prayer you pray and then after that you begin to pray the prayer of maturity that the person will mature and then move on and then become perfect okay and so that is what you do in the first part in the prayer praying part and then the second part like i said is when you teach them to observe so when you are doing things you get the attention make them to be around let them be watching let them be looking let them be seeing the way you are doing things and all of that so that when they go they will do the same thing and that is how i was we were taught that is how i and my wife when we were in that ministry and all of that that's what we are taught we were taught all this thing and we were observing and then after a time i was now sent okay so when this when i was sent my uh, i was sent to abuja then we were not yet married uh, i was not yet married to my wife uh, that was um, she was sent to go and plant a church in um, Kalaba. Okay, I was sent to go and plant a church in um, Abuja, and I didn't know anybody. I didn't know who, where I was going to sleep when I get to Abuja. I didn't have any more. By the time I got to Abuja, I think it was either two or three hundred naira I had in my pocket left. I didn't know anywhere I was going to sleep. I didn't know no money, no nothing. That is how we are trained. So this it, because it depends on the kind of food you were given to eat, the kind of word, message, or teaching we were subjected to. So after that, we are thrown out into the field to go and test, go and prove what you have learned already and all of that. And I knew what I went through in that place. And at the end of the day, that church stood where I planted that church, bought land for the church, we grow the church and all of that from nothing, from absolutely nothing. I was sent to that Abuja. Six months later, they started sending me uh, uh, messages I should bring my own contribution from the church and all of that. You can imagine. And what they gave me to go to Abuja then was just nothing. It was uh, when I came back, they bought books for me, about three or four books. They gave me, they say that is um, uh, what they are giving to me to go to the field and uh, plant a church and all of that in a no man's land. So it, 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 there is a time for training and that time of training is not a wasted time. So that is how you raise disciples, okay? And um, so when you, when you do that, at the end of the day, you are going to find uh, what Daniel chapter 12 verse 3 says. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And this is what you are doing, and this is what you continue to do. And when you are doing this, now that you are turning men to righteousness, you are planting churches, I mean, you are discipling people, and now um, from the discipleship, the people that you have discipled have started doing what? They have started doing the same thing that you are doing. That is when you can beat your chest and say, yes, I have done it. And that is when you can read John chapter 15, verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This is where this prayer is fulfilled. Meanwhile, it is not that God is going to leave you on your own to be doing all of that. No, while you are going about planting that seed, 
Okay, the Bible said that he that gives seed to the sower also give him food to eat. So while you are going about planting seed, bearing precious seed and all of that, there is a sustenance that God will, God will make sure. God will provide for you. God will take care of everything that is needed at that time to get the job done. But when your job is now, when that work you are doing now is established, the people that you have raised now, they are now doing the same thing that you are doing. It means your fruit has remained because they are now producing just like you did in your own life and in your own time. Now, you can see that John chapter 15, 16 fulfilled. And you see, in the process of discipleship, like I said, is not a 100 meter dash. You start it today, tomorrow you get there. That's why it takes patience and all of that. And God is slow in dealing with us along this line because molding life is not a day's job. Molding destinies of men is not a day's job. But when you get it, when you have finally raised that person, you begin to reap the reward. It's just like you now. You have your son, you have your daughter, and you are training them in the school. You've given birth to them. Okay, they are born now and then nobody is good. Nobody is giving you any reward for giving birth to your children and all of that. Nobody rewards you for raising them, for sending them to school and paying the bills and then making sure that they are grow up well. You take to show them, raise them in the admonition of the Lord and all of that. Nobody is going to pay you. You are not receiving any money and all of that. But guess what? When they have finally grown up and they have finished the school and they now start working, just like you are working. Now, you are going to begin to receive the benefit of all your labor. You have raised them now, they are going to begin to honor you because the time and the season has come. That is how it plays out in the kingdom of God. So it will need patience and all of that. But meanwhile, while you are doing that job, God takes care of you. Don't, because you are in the center of God's will. It, nothing will happen to you. God will protect you. God, you have a, 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 a diplomatic immunity from heaven that not one thing will touch you nothing will happen to you and you'll get doing that job and it will get to a time when the reward will begin to come and guess what in the case of raising a child that you sent to school that finally started working and all of that is going to the reward is going to be giving you is giving you money and all of that but in the case of god is much much more than money you see what he said that you're going to get he said anyone that have forsake father mother brother sister uncle you know and all all of that for my sake and for the gospel. He said, you are going to get a hundredfold in this life. Then he began to mention them one by one and all of that. And like I said, the hundredfold of houses and all of that is not that you are going to have houses everywhere all over the country or all over the nations of the earth. That's not what he's talking about. You are going to raise children. You have so many children. You have so many people that you have touched, you know, their lives and all of that. Some of them are within the country where you are. Some of them are within the state. Some of them are outside the state. Some of them outside the country and all of that. So at any point in time, you find yourself in any of these places. You're not going to be looking for where to sleep. You're not going to be looking for money to go and uh, spend a lot of money, you know, paying for hotel bills and all of that. You will see that they are at your call and uh, beck and call. They will be there to take care of you, to feed you, to take you around and all of that. And, for, and at the end of the day, when you are going, they will bless you. You know, there is no such blessing like that. Okay, so that is what God gives in return for those of them that follow him and to serve him faithfully and all of that. So that is what it is all about discipleship. There is a many more, but we just wanted to give, all, uh, give you the basics of what you need to do when you win soul. Like I said before, soul winning must, is not may, it must go hand in hand with discipleship. And for you to be able to do that, you can see the process, and it's a long process. That is why it, it is only through the church platform. And that is what God, how God ordained it. That's how God planned it. So if you are doing that, find a church closest to where you are. Discuss with this, the set man, the leaders of the church or the leadership of the church and all of that. And let them agree with you so that when you go and win that soul, they will give you the support that you need. And then you bring them to them and they will take care of them and they will grow them and they become somebody else. You know, 
what God wants them to be. And when you are in the habit of doing that, you can be rest assured that God will pay every single bill in the process. And this explains the reason why, because I've been in this business for more than, uh, since 1996. That's almost more than 25, 26 years now. I have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've met so many people who say they are in two missions and they are angry with churches. If you see them talk about church, they condemn the pastor. They say they don't know what is happening in the field. They are just within the four walls of the church, playing church and playing. That's where you hear the word playing church, that God has left the church. He has moved on and all of that. The people who talk like that are those of them. Most of them are the ones that are not not church based they are not planted in the church the bible said that god plants the solitaries in family god is the one that make you lie down on green pasture he brings you everybody every man must belong to a local assembly okay and then it is that local assembly that will send you on a mission to go and do xyz so when you want to go and do all that they will be in support they will support give you the prayer support they will give you the financial support they will give you the human resources that you need so when these souls are won then they provide the base they provide you the accommodation the space and they give you the workforce that are going to help to make sure that that work is established and all that. that's how that's god design if you read it i don't have the time now because of time constraint you see how paul the bible says, even in the acts of apostle they then he says separate me paul and barnabas for the work with i have sent them and then when they gathered and prayed they lay hands and they sent them and they gave them everything that they needed and afterwards paul still came back again to that same base church okay and so the church he gave report about what is going on what how and what had happened and stuff like that so that is the design of god so that we don't just go and win soul and then at the end of the day you can't give account of that soul is a wasted effort honestly speaking and it breaks my heart and it more, more especially it breaks god's heart in the days of ignorance god overlooked but you see this is the kind of mistake in the past about 10 20 years ago we made a whole lot of that mistake you hear about great crusade that have taken place but if you look at now you will not be able to account for the soul that we are won in those great crusades you won't see anyone standing today you don't know what has become of them no account no traces and stuff like that but the more pathetic aspect of it is that even in this our time in this our present day there are still a lot of people who are still doing that same thing a young man came to me and said and told me how that they have been uh, reaching out to so many youth so many youth they organize program they do a whole lot and all of that and they are you know they are getting saved and getting impacted and all of that i now asked him, asked him i said so where are they now all those souls you have won and all of that where do you know where are they he said i'm well i will not be able to know i don't know but uh, all we are doing is that we just gather them share the word of god with them and then take them through some what Whatever, and after that we move on i said that is not how it is done now because you don't you don't know where they and he guess what the guy is looking for money he say he doesn't have money to do this he doesn't have money to do that and all of that so which one do you belong to nowhere so is that same scenario he keeps playing on and on and on so please if you must do this then do it the way it's supposed to be done. And then the result will come. And every one of us is going to rejoice. Thank you so much for your time. I am open now to questions if there is any. Thank you. And my number is plus 234-806556-0481. Plus 234-806556-0481. Eight zero six double five six zero four eight one. Thank you. Q and A session has started.
No question. Okay. In absence of questions, so we can call it a day. Okay, so let's pray. Father, we thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence. Thank you for the entrance of your word gives light is a lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit, for communicating the truth of God's words to us. I thank you, Lord, and I pray that you write these words with the finger of your spirit in the fleshy heart of everyone to the intent that you become flesh and blood and the fruit thereof abide and all the glory and honor be unto God our Lord and our Savior. Thank you and God bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This session is no longer being recorded. Mm -hmm.